meeting. So welcome everyone. Uh, today is uh, Tuesday, May 11th, or if you are on the western side of the Atlantic, it's still uh, Monday, May the 10th for you. And uh, this is the Antria community meeting. Um, so this is uh, the post CubeCon instance for those of you that uh, have uh, had the chance to attend the KubeCon Europe. And uh, well, the main news, as uh, probably you know, is that uh, we have, uh, there are some project changes uh, in Antria, some uh, rather important changes, I would like to say, but I will uh, probably let Antonan go through these changes. Hi, uh, thanks, Salvatore. Uh, Hi everyone. So yeah, we're uh, as uh, as we've announced on the Slack channel, we're happy to announce that uh, Entria has been accepted as a, a CNCF sandbox project. Uh, so I mean, obviously, I, I think that this community is, uh, community has been aware of uh, the fact that uh, Entria applied as a CNCF sandbox uh, project, and I think the acceptance was about a week ago. Uh, so we're, I think, I, I can say that we're all excited about uh, this change. Um, and uh, yeah, we hope it will bring uh, more members uh, to, to the Entria community and more users as well uh, with the extra uh, visibility that being a, a sandbox project gives us. Uh, because our sandbox project will show up on the CNCF pages and we'll also have some uh, office hours time at, uh, at the future uh, KubeCons, for example. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited about this. And I, I guess I can uh, uh, make the transition uh, into the first uh, topic on the agenda, Salvatore, because as part of uh, this uh, donation and entry being accepted as a CNCF sandbox project, we need to move uh, the GitHub repository from the VMware Tenzu organization to a vendor independent organization, um, which uh, is going to be Entria-io. Uh, and uh, as some of you may be aware, uh, we had a vote on the Slack channel uh, in the last uh, week uh, or so, ever since we got notified that we're accepted into CNCF Sandbox. And there were two choices, Project Entria and uh, Entria-io uh, Entria for the names, because we've uh, had those names reserved on GitHub for a while now. And it seems that um, uh, Entria-io got uh, three times as many votes. Uh, so despite Salvatore being uh, strongly opposed to having a dash in the GitHub organization name, uh, Andrea will move to uh, Andrea-io. Indeed, now I have to reorganize the keys of my keyboard because uh, reaching out to the dash with my little finger is very annoying and it costs me a lot of energy. So I'm going to reorganize the keyboard, the keys of my keyboard for that. I mean, jokes aside, it's been a, a great news for the project, a great news. And uh, it's probably a very important milestone in the life, in the life of the project, much more important, I would say, that the 1.0 release. So it's uh, truly something that changes. Uh, I believe the meaning uh, of what we are doing here. But Antonin, is there are there are also requirements for contributors? Uh, do we need to? Uh, I think you mentioned that we need to make sure that every contributor has an updated affiliation or something like that. Oh, so uh, by becoming a CNCF project, so we have access to a few dashboards, uh, DevStat dashboard, which gives us information about. Uh, the health of the project. So uh, a, a, a very important metric, uh, and I think it's good that you bring it up, actually, I wanted to say something about this. A very good important metric for health of the project is uh, PR, pull request engagement time. So when a contributor, especially a new contributor, uh, opens a pull request, uh, how long does it take on average for um, for the for other members of the community to review this PR and to comment on this PR, and so this is we I took a look and we're actually doing pretty well with a a mean time of about eleven hours. So I think this is this is great, and I think we should keep uh, keep doing what we've been doing, and even if possible, try to reduce that time 
uh, and like uh, always make sure that we uh, leave a review or a comment on a on a on a PR when it's uh, when it's open, especially by a new contributor, uh, because that's really what uh, helps boost contribution, I think, and that's why the CNCF is actually tracking this. So I think uh, our 90th percentile or something is is five days. So we should try to keep that. Um, we should try to keep that time uh, low and see if we can avoid uh, leaving PRs open for five days without without leaving any comments. Uh, and uh, uh, so as part of those dashboards, we can also see which companies are contributing to, to the project. And um, uh, it, sometimes they try to determine the, ad, uh, the affiliation of each developer uh, based on their GitHub profile, I believe. And GitHub history, but sometimes they, they get it wrong. So I invite you to look at your um, uh, affiliation uh, because I actually got an email uh, that it should have been updated for all entry contributors. I, I didn't check, but uh, you can check your affiliation on that uh, GitHub repository. And if it's wrong, uh, uh, you can open a pull request to update your affiliation. So in my case, my affiliation was wrong. It was showing as my previous employer. And because so many contributors had, had missing affiliation information, it was showing my previous employer as the main contributor to entry, which uh, obviously is not the case. So um, I updated my affiliation. And I think that uh, the person um, uh, maintaining that repository also ran the scraping uh, script that tries to collect information about uh, each contributor's affiliation. So I think you, you can you can take a look and see if your um, affiliation has been updated correctly. If not, submit a PR. And in the chat, I'll also post a, post a link to the uh, GitHub issue opened by the CNCF to, to keep track of uh, entry as onboarding. So there are a, a few items that we have to take care of in, in the upcoming weeks. And the main item was, uh, is uh, uh, moving to the new GitHub organization. So once that item is, is taken care of, I think the rest of the, the, rest of the items are gonna be pretty, pretty quick and pretty uh, easy. Uh, the good news is one of them is that we need a, a Slack channel on the Kubernetes Slack, and we already have that. So uh, um, I think a few of those items we, we've already taken care of from, from the get-go. Uh -huh. Oh, I guess something that may be of importance is I believe that the CLA uh, needs to change. Uh, instead of having a, a VMware CLA uh, for the repo, we're going to have a CNCF CLA. So I expect that um, all contributors, including the ones employed by VMware, may have to uh, to uh, sign the CNCF CLA, or maybe your your company already has like an umbrella CLA for for the CNCF. So uh, just something that may come up in, in the future for your uh, pull request. Yeah, that's uh, that's exactly my only question. But is the, it was the C? Um, so now the CNCF is using CLI because I, I seem to remember they will use DCN or something else. Uh, they have both a DCO and a CLA, so okay. I, I need to check. If we have the choice, I think we'll probably just get a DCO because then no one yeah. needs to sign anything. You just need to ensure that you sign your commits. So it will also be a small change for. Uh, people contributing to Entria, but uh, it's pretty easy change, right? It's just when you git commit on the command line, you have to add a, a, an extra parameter. Yeah, sounds good. And um, mm, there was a one more questions, one more question that I had on this list, and uh, mm, it was sorry, I know I can't remember. Oh yeah, there was just a very stupid thing about the license scanning tools. We do we have any scanning tool on the public repository at the moment for licenses? Uh, we do have one, uh, but I think we should try to adopt the one that's just uh, FOSA. I think it's mm -hmm. a more uh, comprehensive one than what we have today. Uh, but we do have some things that uh, checks that we don't use. Um, uh licenses which are not business friendly basically which is what this is about things like uh lg yeah 
Sounds good. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for the website, uh, do we have analytics for the website? No, uh, uh, I, I, we... I, I ignore it. No, we do not. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll check with uh, uh, Ami, who, who takes care of our uh, onboarding. Uh, but I believe that if you don't have analytics, then um, that's fine. Nothing needs to change. But we do need to uh, transfer uh, ownership of the uh, entry.io web, uh, web domain to, um, to the CNCF. Good. <clears throat> well, that's, uh, that's really exciting news. And uh, it will take some, uh, are you going to set up, a, uh, no, we, we, you cannot set up a redirector from uh, the VMware Tanzu or go to the new organization or can you? Oh, it, it will be done automatically ah, okay, by great. Uh, GitHub. Yeah, when, when I transfer the repository and move it to the new organization, mm -hmm. uh, if you try to visit that GitHub web page, it will redirect you. Uh, I don't remember if, uh, I, I, I think also when you use Git from the command line, like you fetch from that remote, I think it, it also forwards the uh, SSH or HTTP uh, request and um, uh, you may not have to uh, change anything locally. Although it may, may display a message saying that the repo has been moved and suggest a command that you can use to update your uh, remote automatically. Perfect, which is great. Cool. So, does any anyone have questions, comments, any curiosity about uh, moving uh, Antria to the CNCF? Is there a timeline to all those changes? Uh, all of this needs to happen within like the next month, basically four weeks to six weeks. So, um, I'm hoping that uh, we can complete the GitHub move by the end of this week. Um, uh, since it, it shouldn't be disruptive to, to people too much, uh, except for one part that uh, I want to, to cover in a second. Um, uh, yeah, I'm hoping we can take care of it quickly because after that we can like update the links and everything and, um, and, uh, and move on from there. Hi, Antonio, do you think there will be anything about the CI to change? Sorry, about CEIP? But no, the CI, will it impact oh, the CI? CI, I don't think so, because when you clone, uh, I mean, something may break, we'll see, but when you clone the repository, it will still be able to clone it using the old um, uh, the old address. So obviously, uh, over time, we should try to update everything to use the new, the new uh, web uh, URI, but we, we can take our time uh, doing so. Uh, and uh, on on the, I think we also have like some web hooks. Maybe uh, we use the GitHub API to like update statuses and things. Um, uh, are, are you referring to things like uh, uh, SME.io and how we use that to uh, propagate uh, uh, the CI job status from the Jenkins dead beds to to GitHub? I think as, as long as we can keep the older URL for a time, so we can update the URL afterwards. Maybe maybe there won't be much trouble for this. So uh, I'll take a look. I'm hoping we don't need to change anything on that side. Uh... OK, thank you. All right, so the change I wanted to discuss, and let me share my screen. Um, let's see, cool, cool. Uh, so hopefully you guys can see my, my screen. Yes. So uh, as part of that uh, move to a new GitHub organization, uh, we should also update our, uh, uh, our Go module import pass. So I was kind of thinking that uh, because of the GitHub redirects, probably uh, things should kind of like keep working, uh, even if we keep using the old import pass. But I, I think as part of this move, obviously we're moving away from uh, VMware Tenzu organization. We should also remove VMware Tenzu from, uh, and VMware related things from the, the Go module import pass. And so, uh, I opened this issue because we basically have two choices uh, when we do the renaming of the import pass. We can choose to uh, keep using the GitHub one, 
so it would be like yeah, github.com slash entria.io slash entria uh, because Golang has like uh, native support for SVN systems, right? And so uh, that that would be our new import pass based on our new uh, organization GitHub organization name. Uh, so here, this would be the new import pass. Uh, or we can switch to using um, what what is referred to in the Golang world as a, a vanity import pass. So instead of uh, using the one which is kind of like auto-generated based on your GitHub repository, you can choose to use an import pass based on a domain name that you own. So in your case, we use entria.io. Uh, so instead of uh, github.com slash entria.io slash entria, we could switch to using uh, just entria-io or entria uh, sorry, just entria.io or uh, entria.io slash entria. And uh, if, I mean, all, uh, I don't want to say all, but most uh, popular cloud native projects, uh, things like uh, Kubernetes, uh, Knative, I mean, there are many of them um, use like a vanity import pass based on uh, the domain name of their website. So for Kubernetes, it's uh, Kubernetes-io, uh, right? So you have Kubernetes-io slash um, API machinery or slash API server, for example. Uh, so we can do the same thing uh, and uh, it's very easy to set up. So we can switch to using entry.io uh, and the two main advantages would be uh, that the import pass becomes smaller. So instead of having to repeat like uh, uh, github.com uh, everywhere, we just, we just use entry.io. The second advantage is if we ever need to move to a new GitHub repository one more time, God forbid, uh, we will not need to change the import pass again, right? Because we, we just use the entria.io one that, that we own and it's not tied to the um, to the source virtual version control provider that, that you use in, in our case, GitHub or the GitHub organization that, that you're using. Uh, drawbacks to using a vanity uh, import pass, potential drawbacks would be um, that uh, someone may uh, implicitly trust github.com but may not trust a domain name that uh, uh, they are not familiar with. Uh, I think that's mostly a, a moot point and I, I talked to a few people about this and, and I don't believe it's a, a significant concern. Uh, not to mention anyways that few people uh, import entry.io in their packages, right? That's not how you consume entry. You consume entry as a, a Docker container, as a binary, but you don't like, it's not a library typically that you're going to use to, uh, you're going to use as a module in, in other projects. And the second objection would be like availability um, uh, because it's, it depends on uh, being able to to query some metadata information from Anturia.io. Um, uh, I also think it it may not be a very important point uh, because we use um, uh, we use Netlify to manage our website. We don't manage our website directly, and they're kind of like a big provider uh, with some SLAs uh, put in place. I'm sure, uh, and they also take care of uh, our SSL certificated of of rotating our SSL certificate. So um, both of those drawbacks may not be uh, significant. Uh, as you can see here, originally I was a bit against, leaning against using a vanity URL because I felt it, it was very unlikely that we would ever need to move to a new GitHub uh, repository. But I was discussing uh, with some people, uh, some Golang users at VMware, and they felt that uh, using a vanity uh, import pass was pretty dope. and. Uh, uh, definitely look, looked good uh, for your uh, golang based project. So I wanted to check um, with, with you guys uh, what you think of having an import pass. By the way, originally I thought we were going to use just entria-io, for example, import entria-io slash package slash agent. Uh, Chan commented on the PR and suggested that we use entria-io uh, slash entria instead. Uh, just in case uh, we put other projects under the entria-io GitHub organization for which we want to uh, also use a vanity URL. 
Uh, Chen pointed out that most projects uh, do something like this, for example, Kubernetes. So you have Kubernetes slash um, as a repo name, the component name. Uh, so I'm, I'm also uh, agreeing with Chen here that, that we use something like this, because um, I think we're likely to possibly add some more projects under our entry organization in the future. So yes, sorry, I talked for a long time. Uh, I wanted to check how you guys feel and if you have any opinion about uh, using a vanity uh, uh, import pass, a vanity URL or uh, versus uh, using the, uh, the github.com import pass. Antonio, uh, I just have a question. I, at least I saw most of the thing I plug in this year use GitHub uh, something. <laughs> So, um, I mean, uh, github.com, that project, uh, slash project uh, to be the import pass. But yeah, I agree. That doesn't do, mean do we, we, should, uh, yep. we should do the same as them, right? I mean, there are a lot of projects that also use uh, uh, vanity import pass, uh, although not uh, CNI projects. But do you think the... Since I, I actually, I, I don't know, so I'm just asking, uh, is that possible the, the, the project use some dot IO uh, of given category or for example, they are an independent project or something like that? Is that possible? Or maybe mm -hmm. they are a very popular one, I don't know. So I run those for example, crevasse.io. Sorry, I didn't get the question. I mean, um, for example, I'm just thinking CNI plugin is kind of a plugin, right? Uh, I'm just understand the, the the category of the projects matters in this import pass convention or not. Mm. For example, do you need to be an independent or a well known project to use something that I I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I also think that it doesn't matter too much in our case because, uh, as I said before, we'll not consume as a library. Uh, but then the same can be said of like Kubernetes. Obviously, we import Kubernetes, but that's because we um, we reuse some of the Kubernetes-like packages. Um, most people using Kubernetes, of course, like consume it as as a, as containers and binaries, uh, and not not to build Go software. Um, but no, I think there is no. Uh, uh, nothing preventing us from from using a, a, a vanity uh, uh, import pass. Um, uh, I've I've also noticed that uh, in addition to the big projects, right, uh, uh, there are also some VMware projects using um, a vanity uh, import pass. I think it's okay. uh, uh, Carvel potentially uh, Carvel .dev, uh, but I don't remember exactly, but. Uh, um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. As long as there's a, I mean, a typical pattern uh, for other projects, I think I, I personally think the Antria Dash L is also good. I don't know if anyone else has comments or if they've looked at some projects and. Uh... And uh, oh, Chan commented that uh, Metal LB also uh, has a vanity um, uh, import pass, which is go.universe.tf slash Metal LB. Got it. OK, uh, I'll assume that uh, people are OK with that change. Um, originally, I was leaning a bit against because uh, uh, I felt like uh, uh, the advantages were not big enough. But the feedback I've, I've received is that uh, people think it's generally a, a good idea to switch to a vanity uh, import pass. Uh, so if, if you have a, an opinion that uh, you couldn't express during the meeting, uh, please like comment on the GitHub issue. Or if you find like a, uh, other related projects also using uh, a vanity import pass, you, you can also comment on, on the GitHub issue. Sounds good. Let me stop sharing. Here we go. 
<laughs> all right, so thanks Antonin for uh, going through uh, all the aspects of uh, moving to a new repo, new GitHub repo. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there will be some follow up on uh, this conversation about uh, vanity import paths. To me, you know, personally, it, it's okay. I just have, uh, let's say that I don't like anything that starts with vanity, but you know, probably it's just a of naming it. <laughs> That's okay. And um, well, so we don't have any other topic for today. At least no one came up proposing any other topic for discussion for today. So do, is there anything else that you would like uh, to bring up for discussion? Um, I didn't have time to open an issue. Uh, I'm planning on doing it, but maybe there's something I can just put out there uh, for people to, to think about and, and we can see how people feel in a bit. So uh, we're trying to, I, I don't know if people have realized that, but uh, I, I'm taking care of the entry dot, uh, dash, uh, dot io website. So most of the time it just involves uh, either uh, updating um, uh, the blog page in which we we um, we we publish. Actually, I'll share my screen again. Um, let me. It won't take long. Here we go. So let me go to entry IO. So most of the time, it's just about updating this page, uh, which links uh, uh, to blog posts about Entria uh, or uh, articles about Entria. So by the way, if uh, if you're aware of some. Uh, a blog about our uh, entry as that's not including uh, included here and that's recent enough you, you can send me the link and i'm happy to uh, add it here uh, it doesn't matter if it's in english or uh, another language we we've links to some uh, uh blog posts in in japanese for example so if it's a blog post in in mandarin it, it's fine too i'm happy to add the link and the other part of updating the website is refreshing the documentation every time we do a new entry release. So if you see here, we have a bunch of uh, releases and you can access the version of the documentation for uh, for each entry I release. Uh, at some point, I think I'll remove uh, old versions, but for now you have everything uh, ever since we, we started including the documentation on, on the website. And so uh, it's been a bit of a manual process uh, for me to update the documentation with each release. So uh, I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to automate this process more in the future so that every time we create a new release tag on GitHub, um, this documentation is uh, automatically updated. And actually we have the version of the documentation on the main branch here. So I'm also hoping that every time we update the documentation in GitHub on the main branch, uh, this uh, the website can also be updated and refreshed automatically. Uh, so that's something I'm going to be working on in the future. I've been meaning to do that for a long time, but I just never had time to to get to it. And the question I wanted to ask people is um, how they felt about where the website uh, files uh, should live, uh, because. Um, uh, we have some website source code that uh, we need to commit uh, to, to GitHub. And right now it's been living in a temporary branch in the um, uh, entry at GitHub repository. Uh, but the idea has always been to uh, move it to a main branch so that uh, contributors can update the website, right? They see an issue with the formatting or a broken link. Uh, anyone can submit a PR to, to fix that on the website. Right now, it's not the case. And I think Salvatore can confirm because at some point he wanted to update something in the website. And uh, it, it's quite a process uh, to, to do such an update. Um, and so we have two choices. Either we move it to a, a subdirectory in the entry repository. Or now that we have our, our own GitHub organization, we can also move it to uh, its own GitHub uh, GitHub repository, entria-io slash website. Um, so there are two, these are the two options. Um, and they both have advantages and, and drawbacks. And I'm going to detail that on the GitHub issue. Uh, if we put it in the, in the main entria repository, then uh, the size of the repository is likely to grow over time. 
um, because um, uh, uh, because we have to commit a lot of files to the website every time we want to do a, a, an update, and some of those files may be binary, like images and things. So these things tend to grow the size of a repository over time. Uh, it can reach like hundreds of megabytes, which can be a bit annoying when when you clone it, including as part of CI. Um, and also, it creates a lot of commits in the main repo that are specific to the website and not really uh, specific to the entry code base. And the second option, moving it to its own website, entry io slash website, uh, is also suboptimal in a way. A lot of projects do that, but that makes it difficult because right now our documentation is maintained by developers and is part of the entry repository. If we put the website in a different repository, it's hard to trigger automatic updates of the website whenever you update the documentation in, in the entry repo. Uh, and it's just difficult. And if you look at uh, projects which have a dedicated uh, GitHub repository for their website, typically they transition all the documentation from the, from the project, from the development uh, project uh, to the website repository, um, which, which makes lives a bit more complicated for developers because now when you add a feature and you need to add documentation, you cannot do it with the same pull request. You have to first open a pull request against Entria and then against the website repository. Uh, so I don't expect to us to make a decision about this right right now, uh, but this is something I wanted to bring up, and I'll be opening a GitHub issue about this. So uh, if you have comments, please feel free to speak up now. Otherwise, uh, I'm happy to have a, a discussion on on the GitHub issue. Right now, I, I don't have a preference myself, so it's something I, I need to think about as well. Um, I have a quick question, Anthony. So, mm -hmm. so if if let's say we um, have this uh, website as a separate repo, is it uh, not possible if we can um, set up some linking mechanism so that you know a certain page of the website is a hard pull for um, the entry repos slash um, blah 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 dot md, and then it just displays the markdown there? Is that possible? Uh, it's possible, and that's what I would do. The, the problem with that is if someone updates the documentation in the entry website, uh, they, they don't know if that documentation is going to render correctly in the website. So it's not possible to make a change to the documentation and then look at what the website is going to look like uh, 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 as generated by CI before actually merging your PR and having the website be updated um, uh, through that kind of like notification mechanism and by pulling documentation from the entry uh, repository. Uh, so what I wanted to try to, to do is um, if someone modifies a, a markdown file, which is used in the website and you open your PR, uh, if you're the person reviewing that PR, you, qu you can quickly look at a preview of the website to see how it's going to look like on the website. Um, so that was, uh, ideally, that's what we would be able to do. Now, it, it may not be an issue, really, because we run so many linters uh, on the mark markdown files right now. And by the way, the reason for running those linters that tell you that, oh, you have a missing white, uh, white line and that kind of stuff is to ensure that the markdown is going to look good on the website and it's going to be able to render correctly into HTML. Um, so it may not be an issue. Maybe we can uh, we can go with it. Uh, and see what happens. And if we ever run into issues where people merge some documentation and then the website cannot pull it and render it correctly, then we can think of a, an alternative solution. That's a possibility. I think it's a smaller price to pay compared to um, growing the size of the entry repository by, by adding uh, the source code uh, of the website. Yeah, I agree. So if anything breaks once in a while, we just had a second PR. It's not a, like the end of the day, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it depends on whether it happens once a month or uh, yeah. once a day. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Makes sense. 
Uh, yeah, it does seem that most projects use a separate repository. Um, um, so yeah, it, it possibly that's the way to do it for us. And if we eventually need to move the documentation over, uh, like in the case of Kubernetes, for example, I think the documentation is, uh, everything is under Kubernetes slash website. Uh, then that's something we can we can do for the long term. All right, thanks, Yang, for the question. And uh, I think that's all for me, Salvatore. Sounds, sounds good. Thank you, Atalan. Uh, thanks, everyone, for the comments. It seems that uh, probably we are also out of topics for today, unless there is anything else that you would like to bring up. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> OK, I'll wait just a, a few more seconds to see if there is anything else that uh, the team would like to discuss. And it appears that the consensus is to get some a few minutes back for today. So I believe we can uh, close this meeting a little bit earlier. and. Uh, and uh, well, that's, uh, that's really all for today. So thanks everyone for joining and uh, talk to you for uh, to the next Antria Community meeting in uh, two weeks time. Thanks, Salvatore. Have a good Thank night. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.